Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon or whatever time you're listening to this. Welcome to Dragonfly Heart Medicine Radio. I am your host, Kristen, and as always, I am excited for um, the guests that we have today. And we're going to be exploring a topic that I personally do not really know that much about. Um, we're going to get into some astrology. So I'm looking forward to um, soaking up some of the wisdom that is going to be shared with us today. So I'll go ahead and have my guests introduce herself and tell us a little bit about why she decided to be on the podcast today and the information that she wants to share with everyone. So my name is Melissa Markham, and I run a business called Melissa Markham Vibrational Astrology. And I'm very passionate about astrology, and I feel like we're all feeling this very strong energy right now and things are starting to change and you might be sitting there and saying what the heck is going on and what's going on is so fascinating um we're changing so about i'll just i'll get into a little bit what's going on and then a little bit you know why i decided to you know why i've been drawn to it so every about every 250 years, the earth points to a different constellation and a different sign. So we're getting into fully the age of Aquarius. We were in the age of Pisces. So you can kind of feel that going on because tech, Aquarius is all about technology, artificial intelligence. You're seeing everything starting to change from earth-based businesses, you know, where you physically go to an office to now everything's online, right? And we've seen that the last, gosh, the last year with COVID, that everything changed. Absolutely. So it's not surprising that it's, people are starting to wake up and they're starting to more understand their place in the universe and all these changes. Or unfortunately, they're scared to death and kind of hiding under a rock and I'm like, can't deal with it. So it's, it's hard for some people. And it's, it's one of those things that the more you grow, pain forces you to either look within or not want to deal with it. So my passion with all of this is I've, I've always been into the stars since I'm a little, since I'm a small child, I never thought of myself as a math person. So I never wanted to get into astronomy, but I always had this inkling that there was something more than what we've been told, you know? from a religious aspect or from any aspect. And so I really started to just want to understand the stars. And I I was always interested in the planets, you know? I mean, I remember as a kid, my very educated mother just served us nine pickles, you know? That's the whole from, you know, Mercury to Pluto. And it just always stuck with me. I would be wanting to know people's sun signs and just understand the kind of person from a psychological standpoint. So um, the last five years, I've been really honing in on this. I've studied with a very well-known astrologer and I've taken every type of astrology class out there. And I'm just, you know, getting my business together and it's really at a key time because of all of this energy and the changes going, moving into the age of Aquarius. And um, it's just, it's, it's pretty divine. So that's, that's kind of the background, a little bit of what's going on. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) I was just going to say, yeah, as a child, I was really interested in looking up at the stars and trying to remember some of the constellations and, you know, you could go to the dollar store and get those like glow in the dark sticky stars and I have them like all over my room. So Uh I feel like I was always kind of interested in that as well. And then there's also, there's been so much talk 
about the age of Aquarius, I feel like in a, a lot of spiritual communities, but with not much context for what that really means. Um, so if you could um, elaborate more on that for a moment and, so, and then continue with, uh, sorry, I'm thirsty. <laughs> no problem. So okay. yeah, so, so that's, you know, when we end an error, so to speak, there's, there's chaos because traditionally humans don't like change. They get used to a certain cycle, but, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter who's in office politically. It doesn't matter. Any of these things don't matter. It's, it's destined for change and the change helps us grow spiritually, consciously, every which way. So with that, you know, like I said, when I first started talking about it, our daily life will change. I mean, in, in small ways, it's not, it's not, you know, because we're not going to be fully into the age of Aquarius until 2080. So we're mm -hmm. approaching this change and it really started in about 2008. So it is, it is, it is a pretty long cycle. Um, you know, it's just going to, I feel that there's going to be some closure on things that have been in this last age of this Piscean age that is going to kind of close and, and we're going to have new lessons and the next generation of humans are going to have to deal with new things. So, but that's, that's, that's what I believe the soul comes to the earth is to learn. It's kind of like the Disneyland for the soul. Cause I always say, you know, we, we talk about getting to, you know, a higher level of consciousness and reaching our Dharma or reaching whatever, whatever you feel, you know, we're transcended to reach. But when you think about it, it must be kind of monotonous to just float and be energy. So if that, if the soul, you know, has the opportunity to come back to a body and to, and to learn and grow, you know, it, it, it it's, it's pretty dynamic. So um, another thing I want to point out that, and this is, this is really just in the United States, because again, we're noticing a lot of chaos. We're noticing a lot of people veering off to different sides, different things. So everything has a chart. Um, you know, people have charts, countries have charts, businesses have charts, everything. So when the United States was created in 1776, there's a chart. And I, as an astrologer, focus on what's called the lunar nodes. They are the elliptical points in the sky. You have the south node, which is the energy that you come in on. It's very internal. It's very, it's very moon-like. And then you're trying to get to the north node, which is very... Um, it's, it's really about your soul mission and life purpose of why you're here. And you have this inkling to get there, but it's really, really hard because you're so used to and what, what you know and what you're seemingly good at, but you're not challenged. You're not, you're not, it's hard, you know? And so that becomes the path of the life lessons to try to get there. It's never really people really don't ever really talk about it. It's never even really pointed out that much and focused on in astrology, but you, I, all of us have that desire within us. So when I do readings, people are like, how did you know this? You know, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't know that by a sun sign because the sun is just who we show the world. It's the, our sun but there's so much more into a chart than just the sun. There's every point of where every planet was, you know, stationed at the time you were born. So 
back to the United States chart, it came in on the lunar nodes. It was Aquarius. Aquarian energy is 11th house. It's people. It's we the people. It's a collective energy of working together as a group. And the north node, that's the south node, created like back in 1776. The north node is in Leo. Leo is the sun. It's self. Your sun sign is sense of self. So with that, we have something called Pluto return. So Pluto takes 248 years to go around the sun. It's the last recorded planet that we focus on. I mean, there's more planets, there's more star systems, there's more everything. The universe is, is endless, but this, this is what we have focused on. So basically with this Pluto, Pluto return, you're only, it's, it, 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 it's only gonna happen every 248 years. So that energy means Pluto energy is death, destruction, and then transformation. So you can kind of feel this right now. You feel the death part of it. You feel the destruction, you know, you almost feel the breakdown of what was established in 1776. You know, people are veering off to nobody, nobody knows the truth. Nobody, everybody consciously has a different idea of what's going on. It's confusion. It's, it's crazy. So this energy is going to, it's going to hit next year, 2022. And any astrologer that you see on other podcasts or that do have shows on, um, you know, YouTube, any, any different other channels, streaming channels, next year is going to be very re restrictive. We're not out of this yet with COVID. <laughs> we are not out of this. In fact, looking at it astrologically, we're probably not going to have some relief until the end of 2023. Interesting. So it's going to be, how are you, how is humanity, what direction is humanity going to go? Are they going to really reach a level of consciousness that they really understand themselves and are not following a group that, that maybe at this point, at the end of a cycle, it's trying to fix the corruption. It's trying to move and to move forward. That's really, if you study the cycles, you know, that, that's, that's really going into the age of, of Aquarius. And also with this Pluto return, it's, it's really talking here about transformation. So that's really the energy that I feel that everybody is really, they know it's here. They just don't know what it is. Absolutely. And that is so interesting and fascinating because I've never heard of the, the lunar nodes. And uh, it's interesting how you go, you know, all the way back to when the United States was kind of created and the type of energy that was present um, was kind of this more like people type thing and transferring to the self. But then also, you know, the age of Aquarius is like a transition. It's not like it's just here like that. Um, right. and there's lots of years that are involved in this transformation, but I mean, I can speak for myself when, yes, this energy is absolutely very strong and hmm. without going into too much detail, um, there's been a lot of metaphorical death this year, more so than last year for me. And hmm. until I really embraced the energy, like I was struggling, right? I didn't want to go. I was like, I want to just stay in my South node. And I know my North, I know kind of, you know, my North node is up there and I have this mission and purpose, but I don't even know how to get there. Um, so it's just interesting. And especially for me um, being, you know, into the spiritual world, but also being a high school teacher, um, it's been really interesting to see how this is affecting like our young people. Uh, well, and um, yeah, it's just all so fascinating. It all kind of makes sense, right? When you look at it from an astrological standpoint, it's, 
it's where we're we're at right now. So we're all kind of on a crossroads of where of where we're going. I feel we're going, like I said, age of Aquarius, knowing knowing Aquarius. Um, it's ruled by Uranus. Uranus can be sudden in a chart. It could be sudden unexpected change. It doesn't always have to be bad. It could be good depending on the aspects in a chart. If it's if it's easy or difficult, um, it's all about technology. It's all about you know AI. I mean, you see AI right now in your local grocery stores. You know, there's always a self checkout line. That's just that just kind of appeared. I mean. It was never really talked about. The news never really focused on it. Um, and we're gonna see more and more of that. I mean, the process, I, I believe that the, the, the days that we grew up with, with growing to the mall and, and you know, having this buying market, very, you know. About that, just get on Amazon. Right? Exactly, which Amazon is air energy, right? You're doing, you're ordering goods and services online that's very air energy. So that's going to encompass a lot of our lives. I feel like everything I, and, and I tell people to, cause they'll ask, you know, what, what direction should I go? The future, what, and I'm like anything where you can promote a business online storefront online, you know, it has a greater chance of being successful than the old ways of going and, having a storefront on a physical location. I mean, really it depends to what the business is, but for the most part, if there always has to be an online component. Even with grocery stores, you can order online and then go pick it up. Or if you live close enough, sometimes they can deliver it to you. And even within the school system, we don't hardly do anything on paper anymore. Um, right. every, every teacher has like a Chromebook cart and the students log in and do all their information and like an on, do all their assignments on an online platform, which at first I was very like resistant towards and like, oh, this technology, but it actually makes grading like so much easier. I don't have to spend hours and hours grading papers. Students get instant feedback. I get instant feedback. So once again, it's about like seeing that these things are coming and the changes are happening and just kind of going with it and embracing it to the best of our ability. Um, going back to what you said kind of about us, it's almost like when we are just pure energy in between lifetimes, it's kind of like we get bored and we're like, I think I want to like grow and evolve some more. So I'm going to like pop down to earth school and um, see right. what can happen. So that's really interesting too. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Said, because I wanted to say this. Um, so the body picks the experience, the soul pick or not the, I'm sorry, not the body, the soul picks the experience. So the soul will pick the birth date because knowing based on the lunar nodes, the soul picks the family. And people say to me a lot of times, I would never pick my family. <laughs> that's the body talking. And that's kind of the third dimensional reality saying, you know, defining the rules of which will make for a happier existence. But that's not what the soul is here to do. The soul is here to propel you to understand the reason why you're here and to work on what you chose to work on. So that's where it becomes interesting. Um, I, and if you talk to most highly, highly spiritual people that are on a path, they don't necessarily have what is quote unquote the, uh, the, the model of childhood, let's just say. So, but that was done for a reason, because if you're coddled and, and, and so happy, and why would you want to change? You're not looking for a change. Only the pain of something promotes a greater change and a greater inner awareness. The pain, not, not the, the contentment, in my opinion. So that's what astrology, I believe, does for humanity. It is a it is a blueprint of your life and a guide, but you could you could take it and you could roll it up in a ball and throw it away and say, I'm going to do all this on free will. Now, the lessons will, I believe, continue to continue to be and continue to show up unless you make the changes that you need to make to grow to where you need to be. 
So yeah, it's kind of like learn your lessons now or you'll learn them later, but they're they're good. They're come. there. Yeah. There. That's that's what's been kind of happening in my own life too, is this like all of this pain that I've carried with me throughout my life is really just now starting to reveal itself in a more like tangible way. Like it's always been there, but now like it's manifesting in all these really interesting ways that at first didn't seem connected, but I can connect all of that pain, a lot of it back to childhood and like early adolescence. Um, it's just really interesting, the nature of trauma and how it also relates to, you know, your life mission and purpose and the soul's purpose and astrology. It's like this big melting pot of sorts um, and so yeah and so there's very significant things that happen in astrology for example um so you'll have saturn return happens every saturn returns to in your chart where saturn started every 29 years saturn's about lessons it's ruled by capricorn um it's, 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 or Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, sorry. Um, you know, in, in a lot of the, uh, you know, Star Trek, the cy cyborgs, you know, the, where they talk about Saturn, Saturn's cold, it's dark, it's hardship. It's all of those things that push for you again, to go to a higher level of consciousness. So usually around people around 28, 29, something very dramatic can happen in their lives, whether it's marriage, a baby, a job change or a death or something that really transcends them to a different level of consciousness. You know, you have another thing that happens around 49 to 51 called Chiron return. Chiron is, is the wounded healer. There's a whole story about the wounded healer in Greek mythology um, that, you know, and I, I won't get into it because it's, it's pretty deep and long, but anyway, anywhere where Chiron is in the chart, those are the wounds that you have. And anything, so you have your natal chart where every, uh, everything is fixed there. You, you know, everything is fixed where you were born. Then you have what's called transits. So any, wherever the planets, including the moon, including the asteroids like Chiron, anywhere in the chart is hitting your chart, you can feel those wounds. And like I said, 49 to 51 is Chiron return. So it's really about dealing with those wounds. Mm -hmm. It's really about dealing with that Saturn energy. All of this is to propel you to a higher level of consciousness and get you to the next place that you need to be. So yeah, so the ages you uh, mentioned were interesting. So is that kind of like when people go through their like midlife crisis? Is that some of the energy that's happening? Yeah, the first is I think the first is is really truly propels you into adulthood, twenty nine. You know, because in the, in your early to mid twenties, you're just kind of figuring it out. Like, what do you want to do? You graduate college, or you graduated, you're out of the military, or you're doing something, and you're like, what do I do with my life? Saturn will put you on that that trajectory to, to, to deal with, you know, a lot of Saturn energy is you can master it. You understand it, you know, it's restrictive, you know, it's hard, but it's something that you're, you're well on your way to try to master. Um, now, if you don't, and you continue on the, the same trajectory and path of the way you're thinking and the way you're processing and, you know, you, 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 your next Saturn return can be pretty difficult because that's when you're on the path of your, of the next area of your life, right? You're, you're kind of walking into retirement, you know, or you're looking at like the next, okay, I have, you know, this is, this is the back half of my life, right? So these are, these are very, it, it, it all really, really makes sense. It's all very, yes. and yeah, 28, 29, I went through a huge, like huge, huge, huge transformation that I'm still kind of in the, the middle of, you know, and it's just, yeah, um, because people don't, a lot of people are very skeptical when it comes to astrology. However, I feel when you really take the time to look at it, 
uh, it to me at least, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense and it can help, you know, if someone feels a little bit confused or lost and they get like a reading, it really can kind of help explain kind of why certain things are happening in their life for that um, and kind of why we're here. And I know the one reading that I have gotten in the past, it did kind of just confirm a lot of things in my life. And so um, what all really goes into like when you're doing a reading for a person? Yeah, so I'll, I'll say this. Um, I really think that astrology has been demonized and, and kind of made fun of because, you know, the collective, you know, the collective in our society, and it, it could be, and I, I talk a lot in dimensions because I, I truly believe in dimensions, dimensional, you know, astro travel, all of that. And it's almost like this earth <laughs> has been, um, you know, targeted. So you don't have much control, right? I mean, now, where we started, we had way more control. I believe the human existence had a lot more control, but over the course of time, we've lost that control. You know, I mean, we've lost that control in, in the medical industry, right? Energy healing. We, you know, that's called, you know, that's, that doesn't work. It's like, we need a pill for everything. We need this because it's almost like we're taught not to feel or not to deal with it. So, and I feel like, I feel like that's why astrology has been demonized. So what they did is they put some kind of stupid column in a newspaper and that, you know, made it maybe a really good writer kind of made it a very campy and something that just, oh, that's just for entertainment purposes, right? You have the 800 numbers that's just for entertainment purposes. So it really kind of, it's, it's kind of like, the same thing, like I said, energy healing goes through the same kind of- you like woo-woo, it's too out there. You it's know. too out there. But once you really dive into it and, and you do a reading, what happens is you, that you have compassion for people because you understand their lessons and you, you can look at a chart. Me personally, I look, how I do it is I look at their nodal placements. I know what their life purpose is and soul mission. I know why they're here. That is, and, and, and the house that it falls in, the houses that it falls in makes it personal. So you have the energy of the nodes, what they mean, the polarities of the nodes, and then the energy of what house it falls in. So I can quickly assess at a chart, I'm like, okay, I understand their life purpose, soul mission, and it being in this house, here's what they came to work on. So it's, and then everything else around the chart, I look at like how many planets do they have in the different elements? Mm -hmm. If for example, they have a lot in air, they could be detached because they have so much stuff in their mind that they can't, you know, um, control it, you know, and they have to meditate, they have to release, they have to, you know, not get so stuck on in that air energy. If they have too much fire, they can be angry and, and they can have trigger tempers and just, just be pissed over, you know? Um, so it has to be a balance, a balance. And sometimes, a lot of times in a chart, it's not a balance. So what they have to do is they came here to find the balance within the soul pick that for that to work on. And you can determine a lot of previous lives based on the nodes of this life. And it's, it's, it's fascinating because really all I'm doing is looking at a language and the language is telling me a story mm -hmm. of, of somebody's life. And even the most sinister person in the world, you can look at their chart and have a sense of compassion for it, for them. So it becomes very personal. And it's something that they can't hide because it's there and they can deny it. And a lot of people do deny it because they don't want to, it's hard to make changes. I mean, you know, as a spiritual person, it is hard to make changes. It's hard to get off that, 
that hamster wheel and so the patience, compassion and consistency. Right. Because the brain, because the ego always wants to hang on to what it knows and what it feels comfortable in. But, and you have to really work and understand the higher self and the higher self will, will guide you to where you need to be. And I'm, I always pray. And I remember when I first um, started teaching classes and nothing worked, none of the technology worked. And I, cause I rely, I think I relied just being corporate. I relied on the technology to work and uh, nothing worked. And I said, please release me, you know, Archangel Michael, please release me from this. If I'm not supposed to be here, then guide me to where I need to be. And I did my first teaching with no, with no marketing, you know, collateral, no PowerPoint, no nothing. So I know that that was in me to be able to do that. Absolutely. And yeah, I think at the end of the day, every single thing that happens to us, whether it seems good or bad, is ultimately for our highest good. Uh, right. That can be hard exactly. to accept sometimes, though, especially if it's like it really is. catastrophic. <laughs> It, it is. And, and I can say that the souls that have died or the, the people that have passed due to COVID and due to a lot of things from a spiritual understand standpoint, I completely understand it. But then if I am related to these people or these people are my children, my mother, my, that's hard, right? That's the human stuff. That's, that's, I don't care how spiritual you are, the human the human element to all of it is the most painful. And it's part of what we came here to, to learn also too, is just the human experience and to have emotions and to have feelings and to have an ego mind. Um, exactly. Right in the way sometimes, but you know, yeah, I it's see. been such a great conversation. Um, what, yeah. else, what else? Um, we've got about I don't know how long, I don't even know how long we've been going. I think maybe 30 minutes, 30, 35, something around there. So well, just how I can else. talk about this stuff all day. Know, right? um, Is there anything else you want to share? Like maybe the last topic to cover before we start wrapping Yeah. Up? Um, so I am teaching um, an Astrology 101 series. If anybody's interested in just even knowing the basics of being able to understand your own chart or just do, just kind of dip your feet into it. Um, I am doing that. Um, it is going to be online and in person, although I know that there are people that obviously don't live in the St. Augustine, Jacksonville area. So we can do it as a total online adhering to, to the Aquarian energy. <laughs> um, so there's always that. And, and, you know, just to be able to understand and to read your chart, um, it's powerful. And then what I believe if, is, is if you understand that you're having a true connection to your soul, you're not again, I mean, absolutely. I love doing readings and I want to help everybody for a more in-depth reading of themselves because it takes, it's like anything else. You're working your craft, you know, you're working the muscle memory of working it. But um, so that's that's if anybody's interested, we'll I'll um, we'll share the information. We'll the information. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I feel like I want to join the class, or maybe <laughs> get a reading from you now because it's been a really long time, and I have a lot of really crazy stuff going on in my life that would be interesting for. But um, thank you so sure. much for coming on the show and sharing just a little bit um yeah i might even like have you on again later and talk about some other astrology stuff because i know like we just kind of like dipped our toes in the water a little bit today absolutely so. yeah and i don't i don't mean to with this whole pluto return to create to scare it's to inform and absolutely. to and to understand why it's happening it's supposed to happen we're changing and, you know, the United States of America has never had this kind of energy before. And it feels very, very heavy, but it's, it's for the betterment of our society, of our Republic, of who we are as people, and really having the 
also the understanding to, to understand ourselves from a Leo perspective, to not always join the group and, and do what everybody else says, to have our own mind. Right. Free will, right? <laughs> right, exactly. So I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, never, the tension is never to create fear, but to right. just create some, some understanding and some greater awareness to assist you on your path and journey because it is it does get crazy it does get messy but it's all beautiful at the same time everything is as it should be in every moment even when it doesn't feel that way exactly and that's really the that's really the plutonian energy you know scorpio is all about transformation at the end we're going to be we're going to evolve to be better and we're going to keep evolving to be better and we're going to learn from that past error and we're going to solve those problems and we're going to encounter new situations and understand how we're going to live in that existence. So really that's, that's, that's the point. Thank you again so much for being yeah. here. It was a pleasure and thank you to everyone who is listening or watching and all of Melissa's information will be posted so you can get in contact with her and or sign up for her course that's coming up. So um, that's yeah. our show for today. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day.